morning and a very warm welcome to our service of morning prayer on this the second Sunday in Lent. Um, I'd like to start by letting you know that our appeal for items to go over to Ukraine that um, the church has been organising together with the school has so far raised about 10 pallets um, of, of clothes and all essential items. Um, all together, I think there are about 14 trucks um, on the way to the Ukraine border at, at this time. Um, so that, that, that's really great news. Um, I think the uh, collecting of, of goods is now going to be put on hold for a while um, so we can um, assess what, what is needed the most going forward. Um, obviously, financial donations are always really welcome. Um, and probably if you want to give financially, the best place to give at this time is to the Disaster Emergency Committee for the Ukraine um, Humanitarian Appeal, which you can find online. Um, and the good news there is whatever you give, the government will match give it, so it will double your donation. Um, we will be saying prayers for the Ukrainian people and the situation um, in Europe later on in the service. We've got a service again next week um, online at 10.30 and we also have a service in the school um, next Sunday at 10.30 which will be a communion service led by the Reverend Nick Ball. So we hope you can join us for one of those. So now we continue with our morning service and please join everything that's in bold. The, the service this morning, we're going to be looking at our core values. Um, and there's a picture here, it's on the front of your service sheet, which shows some graffiti on a wall. Graffiti with words that we would think might be, might represent core values to Christians. So I wonder, take a look at those words. Is there any word that particularly stands out to you as being one that you would express as one of your core values? I wonder if we were to put graffiti on the wall of our lives, expressing our core values, what, what words might we put on a wall? Would other people recognise us from our core values? Let's begin by opening with prayer. Please join me with our gathering prayer. Lord, you are our light and our salvation, our hope in times of fear. You protect us at times of danger and you hear our prayers. So Lord, we seek your face and we trust in your goodness. Amen. And our prayer of confession. Forgive us when the words we speak expose our self-interest. Help us, forgive us and deepen our faith. Forgive us when the things we do compromise your integrity. Help us. Forgive us and deepen our faith. Forgive us when the way we use our resources clashes with your core values. Help us. Forgive us and deepen our faith. For Christ's sake. Amen. And we say together, as a hen covers her cheeks with her wings, so you cover us with your forgiving love, drawing us into a new beginning, a new way of being, a new way of serving, strengthening, sustaining, and surrounding us 
with your power and your presence each day of our lives and beyond. Amen. And our collect prayer for the second Sunday of Lent. Almighty God, by the prayer and discipline of Lent, may we enter into the mystery of Christ's sufferings and by following in his way, may we come to share in his glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now Phil will read us our first Bible reading. Our reading is from Luke chapter 13 verses 31 to the end. Jesus' sorrow for Jerusalem. At that time some Pharisees came to Jesus and said to him, Leave this place and go somewhere else. Herod wants to kill you. He replied, Go tell that fox I will keep on driving out demons and healing people today and tomorrow and on the third day I will reach my goal. In any case, I must press on today and tomorrow and the next day, for surely no prophet will die outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who killed the prophets and stoned those who sent you, how often have I longed to gather your children together, as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings you were not willing. Look, your house is left to you desolate. I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Phil. In Chaucer's Canterbury Tales, the nun's priest tells the story of a cockerel and a fox. Chancy Claire, the cockerel, has a dream that he is about to be in great danger. But his wife pooh poos it as to simply fear caused by his indigestion. She persuades him to ignore it. But the wily fox comes upon the cockerel and flatters him by encouraging him to stretch out his neck and to sing. Thereupon, he seizes Chanticleer by the throat and runs off, chased by the whole village. But the cockerel is not so stupid as we might have thought. He encourages the fox to shout insults at his pursuers. Carried away by the thrill of the chase, he starts to taunt those chasing after him. Chanticleer seizes his chance and flutters onto the branch of a tree. Foxes are not as clever, nor chickens as stupid as some folk tales make them out to be. In our Gospel reading, Jesus pub publicly calls Herod a fox. Herod is known for his cunning and his cruelty, but Jesus won't react to his threats. Jesus ignores the advice given to him to run and he continues on his course, a course which he knows will eventually lead him to the cross. Jesus is aware of God's bigger plan, a plan that Herod cannot thwart. Jesus, although no doubt fearful, will not be swayed by that fear. His priority, his core value, is to carry out his father's purpose. He has an appointment with his destiny in Jerusalem and he will go there no matter what. When the writing's on the wall and we're faced with making our life decisions, I wonder what are our core values? Would other people recognise in our lives what we would declare our core values to be? In our reading this morning, the Pharisees are unusually the good guys. They come to warn Jesus, but he insists that he must head towards Jerusalem. 
I'm reminded of the people who have told President Zelensky that he must flee Kiev to escape the bombardment. He refused to go, despite the risk. As the crisis in Ukraine has developed over the last couple of weeks, we've seen countless examples of those who refuse to leave their homes, choosing instead to remain and fight, to remain and report, to remain and bring aid to those in need. The shouted warnings from the Pharisees to Jesus echo down the ages. Get away from here. The enemy wants to kill you. We've seen how core values can affect behaviour. Some seek to grab what they can, while others are willing to sacrifice their comfort and their personal safety for the well-being and protection of others. Closer to home, the core values of our, of our own nation have been called into question as those seeking sanctuary have been turned away. Back to our reading, and in the case of fire, some species of animals have developed ways of protecting their offspring. Those cleaning up after farm fires often come across the bodies of chickens, scorched and blackened by the fire, with live chicks under their wings. These birds have literally given their lives to protect their young. And so, back to Jesus. His role is to go back to Jerusalem, risking the threat from the fox and adopting the role of mother hen to those that, he, that would face the danger. To take the full force of the disaster that Jesus has himself been warning everybody about upon himself, to sacrifice himself for the many. But would the many accept that sacrifice? Unfortunately, mankind has a long history of rebelling against God, of refusing the ways of peace. But it's here that we need to remind ourselves the words of the psalmist. We shall see the goodness of the Lord if we wait. And while we wait, let's check out our own core values. Let's remain firm, completing the mission that God has given us. Whenever we feel disheartened, fearful, angry, or just plain helpless, let's remember However bad things might seem, we have a saviour who holds us under his wings. A saviour whose core value is love. Amen. And now we come to our time of prayer. So let us pray together. Save us, O Lord from the darkness all around us, from the darkness within our own hearts, from the noontide danger and the shadows of the night. Be strong and let your heart take courage, all you who wait for the Lord. In all areas of unresolved conflict in our troubled world, where deep-seated grievances and complex history collide, where shattered lives and destroyed cities are the evidence for our wars, and we feel helpless at so much brokenness. God of our hope, we place our trust in you. Help us to walk in your light. In political decision making on energy, security, aid and sanctions, where true leadership and wisdom matter, 
when government should meet the needs and not the wants of the people, when costly decisions are needed and self-interest needs to be set aside for the good of others. God of our hope, we place our trust in you. Help us to walk in your light. In freezing temperatures as snow falls, when the homeless, refugees, when frightened families shiver in distress, when our visa policy is too complex and bureaucratic to save the desperate, when in our relatively affluent country some go hungry and many with homes are struggling to stay warm amid rising energy costs, we know that change is needed. God of our hope, we place our trust in you. Help us to walk in your light. In our relative security and safety of this country, where we're tempted to trust in our own strength, when our compassion fails, when we lack the imagination to walk in the shoes of the dispossessed and we lose sight of our own dependence on you, God of our hope, we place our trust in you. Help us to walk in your light. In the mountains of our possessions, when we spend, acquire and accumulate things that we do not need, things that do not lead to life, when we're obsessed with more, bigger and better, and we forget the needs of others, God of our hope, we place our trust in you. Help us to walk in your light. In the tangled conflicts of home, school or work in which we're trapped, when we cannot give in and the desire to win is greater than our search for a resolution, softer, soften our stubborn hearts, we pray. God of our hope, we place our trust in you. Help us to walk in your light. In the absence of safety and home, when refugees flee to the borders, in the pauses between the shelling, when a humanitarian crisis is building and families are torn, when we hear fresh the horrors of the news, God of our hope, we place our trust in you. Help us to walk in your light. In all our dreams and longings, where freedom itself is at stake and we yearn for a better, fairer, kinder world, teach us to seek your face and listen to your voice in all our ways and for all our days. God of our hope, we place our trust in you. Help us to walk in your light. Save us, O oh Lord, from the darkness all around us, from the darkness within our own hearts, from the noontide danger and the shadows of the night. Be strong. Let your heart take courage. All you who wait for the Lord. Amen. And now we bring our prayers together by saying together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And we say together, our sending out prayer. Teach me, Lord God, to live out my faith, to show courage, 
when things are tough, to show love to those in need and to be forgiving even when I am hurt. Help me to follow Jesus. Amen. And now for our blessing. The love of the Lord Jesus draw us to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen us in his service. And the joy of the Lord Jesus fill our hearts. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen.